Well, greetings church, we're back again in our leadership development and it's uh, Pastor John Ahoosin here again. I do trust that you're ready to be discipled. Are you excited about the things of God? Right, let's get into the Word of God, shall we, for today. Let's, uh, before we do, why don't you turn to Isaiah 40 verse 29, the book of Isaiah chapter 40 and verse 29 and let's open with a word of prayer, shall we? Father God, we are mindful, Lord, of how important it is to connect with you through your Spirit. And we thank you, Lord, today that we can break bread together as fellow Christ followers. Holy Spirit, we welcome you amongst our midst. And we pray, Lord, that as we would break bread through your Word and the power of your Word, that you would reveal that you would speak as only you can, and that we'd hand over our lives completely to you. And we pray this in the name that is above all names, in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, and indeed our Savior. Amen and Amen. Well, church, I, I do trust that you've been enjoying um, as we've been sharing some word, uh, our pastors, I do thank uh, uh, Pastor Sean Boerter and Gail for the wonderful input that they've been able to extend to us as well. And we thank God for, for the work of uh, His Spirit within our lives. And I'm going to continue today in our leadership development. Um, and I want to talk today about waiting on the Lord. Waiting on the Lord. I'm going to just share a short uh, devotion today, just, just reminding us that that uh, maybe you call to be a church leader and maybe you fear that you have a whole bunch of inadequacies that you have a whole bunch of inadequacies and and you believe that's gonna keep you from being successful do you maybe let me ask you this do you believe do you believe you're too weak to be perhaps a strong leader in the church Perhaps you've already, which is highly likely in the church, it seems to me today, in the modern day church, perhaps you have already been thrust into a position of leadership and you're facing frustration or even failure. Let me tell you today, if so, take heart. God has good news for you. God has good news for you. Do you know that God uses the weak? Do you know God uses the weak? Now, now, before you turn, before you uh, switch out and tune out and, and say, well, I'm not a leader in the church, I believe this word can be for everyone today. God uses the weak. That's right. Isaiah 40 verse 29 reads as follows. He giveth power to the faint and to those that have no might. He increased strength. Isn't that just a wonderful promise? You see, when God calls a person to become a leader, He doesn't choose them on the basis of how clever, talented, or indeed educated they may be. In fact, these are things which God may have to modify. These are things which God may have to change, church. And sometimes even destroy before He can use us. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 1 verse 19, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. The Apostle Paul says this in, in 1 Corinthians Chapter 1, verse 25 to 28. I just want to remind you, as per usual, church, feel free to pause this voice recording and go and seek the scripture out and follow me in scripture. I'm going to be using the King James and New King James through most of my, my talks. 1 Corinthians 1, verse 25 to 28. Because the foolishness of God is wiser than men. 
And the weakness of God is stronger than men. What a wonderful piece of scripture. He reads further in verse 26. For you see your calling, brethren, that not many wise according to the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called. But God has chosen the foolish things of the world to put to shame the wise. And God has chosen the weak things of the world to put to shame the things which are mighty. And the base things of the world and the things which are despised, God has chosen. And the things which are not, to bring to nothing the things that are. This, this, this is what the Apostle Paul is teaching us. Through our weakness, our falterings, our failings, God reveals His wisdom. Through our helplessness, that's right, our helplessness, God displays His power. His strength, that's God's strength, is made perfect huh? in our weakness. Isn't that just challenging? We so often feel we need to be perfect before we can be used of God. We so often feel we have to be perfect before we can be used by God. Through our weakness, our failings, God reveals His wisdom, church. Through our helplessness, God reveals and displays His power. God's strength is made perfect in your weakness, church. Once you embrace that, once you believe that as you wait on the Lord, shall we pray? Father God, we thank you, Lord, that you give power to the faint and that those who have no might. And we pray today, Lord, may you give us strength. May you increase our strength for the glory of God. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, church. Have a great day. God bless you and God keep you.